pretty. Come along. Hi, garden gals and guys. It's Steph with Tiny's Garden. I'm coming to you on a Friday night in my finest. I really do wonder how some YouTubers look immaculate all the time. Because I look like this 90% of the time, but it's fine. I have to tell you, it's been a bit of a week. I am gonna dive into that a little bit, but the purpose of this video is to let you know what I'm doing differently for my second round of ranunculus and anemones that I've started today, which is, I think, the 17th. Let me double check. Yes, the 17th of February, indeed. So it's about two to three weeks after I started my first round, which if you've watched one of my recent videos about the update on it, I've got some that have finally pre-sprouted, thankfully. But as of this morning, I have 35 that I've added. I potted those up this morning and now I have a total of 60. So, whoo! Your girl was really sweating those. I wasn't sure I was gonna have many. But the point is, I'm doing something a little differently this time around than I did the first time around. But first, we have to back all the way up to last year so you'll understand why I did what I did the first time around. So last year was my first year growing ranunculus and I moistened the soil as is usually recommended. I put my tubers in after I had soaked them for three to four hours. I put them in a dark place but up on retrospect, it wasn't a cool place because it was in our unfinished part of our basement, but the other part is finished. So it still gets a lot of air circulation and heat. And it was like 70 to 73 degrees. No! Ranunculus don't like warm air. They want it to be 40 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit when they're pre-sprouting. So imagine the mold that I found when I checked on those babies. Oh boy. Needless to say, they were all rotten. None of them worked. I got a bang in zero, zero out of them the first year. Fortunately, I threw a couple anemone bulbs that I found into my raised beds last year, not doing anything, thinking they were dead, but I thought, ah, I'll just throw them in there. Lo and behold, they grew and they were beautiful. So I got some more this year. Mr. Foker came up beautiful blue anemone, really unique color and a Bordeaux anemone. Anyways, I surprisingly got some great anemones, but not as many as I would have because it was like three or four corms. So this year, we're going bigger and better. Because I had so much mold on them the first year, I decided to hold back on moistening the soil when I was pre-sprouting them. So I skipped that step and I just did a little water on top and then I put them in a room that was about 50 degrees in my office. However, because it is one degree outside, it's only 57 degrees in my office, and this is where my ranunculus and anemones are, but I didn't cover them. I covered some of them with a humidity dome, but now looking back, I don't think that was the right move. I did end up getting mold on some of them on top of the soil, so I would check them every day and I immediately removed that mold. And then I decided to move them out to the greenhouse because the temperature was cooperating. So then I put them out in the greenhouse, which is where they've been pre-sprouting, crossing my fingers, everything goes well. But usually it takes about 14 days and they've now been in there close to 21 and I'm finally getting the growth I wanna see. So I think between having them in the house, not having them in moistened soil, not having them covered, so that they're in a dark environment. Between those three things, I've been a bit off to a slow start with the first group of ranunculus. And the butterfly ranunculus? Oh, dear friend, don't get me started. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, what is the key? I cannot figure out the trick with butterfly ranunculus. I have had one that was a very eensy teensy small growth point, not even really roots growing, but a teensy small growth point. One butterfly ranunculus that I've potted up out of um, at least 20. 
a lot of them are rotting, which I showed some of them in the first update video. But that brings us to today. I have started my second group today and I have switched things up. So here's the lowdown. First, I still went ahead and pre-soaked my quartz, just like I'm supposed to three to four hours. And actually I made the mistake of using my faucet, which immediately pours out warm water. I had to refill my water container with cold water and make sure that all the quartz are in cold water because if they're in warm water they'll be more likely to mold so check cold water i labeled the containers that they were in so that i knew which was which so i can try and keep the same varieties together and every once in a while i would come over and give them some extra water to kind of oxygenate the water that they were residing in oh shoot I just remembered I have to uh, get the water out of my lisianthus that I potted up. I potted up some lisianthus today because there were two growing in the same cell of a soil block. It's an experiment, but I don't want them to get too wet. BRB. Well, they soaked up all that water, so I hope they're okay. I might as well show you what I did. Overall, the lizzies are looking good, but you can see in some of those cells, there's two and there's some algae. So I went through and I cleaned off some of the algae and in some of the cells that there were two, I wanted to try and save the one without just thinning it out. So I bumped some up. You can see the little green into this tray. There's 25 of them and I don't know if they're going to make it or not. I tried really hard to make sure the root was attached, but I'm watering from underneath and there's no water left in there. So hopefully I just didn't soak them too much. but. If I did, it's kind of the story of the week. So first off, my family's healthy, I'm healthy. Everyone I love is seemingly healthy. So overall, life is good. However, this week, it's been a week. My sweet peas fell over while I was watering them and they went everywhere. So I had to try and pick out all the little sweet peas and repot them up into soil blocks, which I did manage to do about 12 to 15 of them. Then heating the greenhouse. Our weather has been fluctuating between 51 degrees and 15 degrees. Yeah, that's 5, 1, and 1, 5. That's a big swing in temperature. My greenhouse is not heated. It's technically a cold frame. When it's heated, it's because there's a space heater in there that I put in there and I manually turn on and off in the mornings and the evenings, depending what the weather is. It's really pretty difficult to keep that greenhouse at an even temperature. Oh! <laughs> I knew there was something else. Perhaps the biggest thing. I made the biggest and best starting your Snapdragon seedlings video. And I felt like I did a really great job. And they're actually, they're coming up right now. But I felt like my camera skills were good. That the different viewpoints I got. The shoot angles were great. Guess who deleted all of it? Uh, that's me. Or are you in the back? I even sat down that day that I did that video and was like, oh, here I find myself with extra time. Let me just gracefully do this starting Snapdragon seedlings at my own pleasure and pace. It was quite wonderful. And then, bam, accidentally deleted it when I was making the new video about cleaning up my garden beds, which is probably not as important as the starting Snapdragon seedlings one. But, I digress. Now, let's go ahead and break on the therapy sesh. Appreciate your ears if you're still here. Appreciate you. Anyways, moving on, moving on. So today, I went ahead and did start my second round, as I mentioned before I went on my big detour. We're to the point where they have been soaking in water for three hours, and the timer goes off. Time's up. So then I dumped the water out of the trays, I put the corms on the table, and we're getting ready to wrap with filling up new trays to pre-sprout them in. So this time, I decide I am going to pre-moisten the soil. So I start with some potting soil, 
I just use the black and gold potting soil that I have and I get a bigger tray to start them in and we're off to the races. I add some water into my soil and mix it up to the point where I've got a consistency that is not wet as I'm squeezing it. There's no water coming out, yet it holds its shape. So I go ahead and put that into the trays. So now we've got moistened soil that I didn't have the first time around. Check number one. I plant the ranunculus with the tentacle side pointing down or the pointy side pointing down. And I also plant the anemone with the pointy side down. You can see the growth point on the anemone is slightly enlarged in one of these. That's what you're looking for. On the butterfly ranunculus, these guys are huge. I put them facing down as well, or at least on their side. And basically say a little prayer that these don't mold. I do use chopsticks as my separators. And then I realized I ran out of chopsticks, so then a good old plastic fork and knife. <laughs> then I proceed to fill those trays up. Woohoo, I got both those trays filled. After that, I go back in with moistened potting soil and cover them all up. Now, the second thing that I've changed, I really dig into my noggin and think what can I use to make these dark? I used cardboard outside and that seemed to make a big difference after I was checking on them, it was probably a week and a half later, and that's when I have checked today and there was more pre-sprouting evidence. So I think that was a big component. So I found 10, 20 trays that fit on top of these trays that I've planted them in to pre-sprout, and I think that's gonna be perfect to keep them dark. Look at this. Voila. So now we're back to the point where I need to store them in a place that's between 40 and 50 degrees so they will pre-sprout and not get too hot and dare I say moldy. I can't tell you how many places I've put a temperature gauge in my house to see if it's cool enough. And today it's rather cool out and so I moved another temperature gauge out into the garage. And dare I say, it was a nice, solid 45 degrees when I checked about 45 minutes ago. It's been a week where when we go and check the garage, it's probably like 30 degrees in there. Here we go. Well, it's certainly dark right now. There they are. But let's see, let there be light, what the temperature is in here. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I'm right inside the garage here. I'm gonna try and see if because this is by the door and if I close this door if it'll be between 40 and 50 degrees in here. Oh, mercy. Axel, what is happening? We're okay. We're okay. Hang in there, babes. Hang in there. You know, I saw Janie from Big Plant Water repeat, put them in the fridge. I think that's my only option. Put them in the basement fridge, which I did put a temperature gauge in there and it stays around 40. Maybe it's time to try the fridge. If they're going in the fridge. I gotta clean out the basement fridge. You know what I'm saying? Good thing you can't smell this. Okay, here's our fridge in the basement. Let's open this up and put a temperature gauge in there. And double check in a little bit, but this is where we actually want it. See, 70 degrees by the grow light. Too warm. Right now I put them in the laundry room. 47.8, it's like that for now. I know it's gonna get warmer. I just moved that in there. But we'll see in about an hour which place is best. Comment below and let me know where you think I end up keeping them, the laundry room or the refrigerator. Last second to cast your vote. Pause the video and comment below. Fridge or laundry, fridge or laundry. Also remember to subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel.
Looks like the final resting place is going to have to be the fridge because it's 57 degrees. It's just going to get a little warmer over here. And the fridge is at 45. Right there, 44.8. That'll work. It's pretty dry though, but we're going to give it a go. Okay, so here they will sit and I will check on them every couple days or so, make sure they're not moldy and see that they're doing okay. They should be here for about the next 14 days. Pre-sprout, pre-sprout, my little ones. And that's a wrap today, everyone. Please comment below and let me know if you think that's a mistake by putting them in the fridge or if you think it'll be okay. I think it'll be okay. I'm hoping so because I'm about down to my last option for a place that stays between that 40 and 50 degree range. So fingers crossed, everybody. Fingers crossed. And if you're out there and you're trying to make these ranunculus work and pre-sprout, you're not alone. I'm with you. It's a little bit of a war this year. All in all, we're going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. We're going to turn this seed starting ship around. This ranunculus growing anemone pre-sprouting madness. We're going to right the ship. So I hope things are going well with yours. And if not, try and try again, right? Same old story, different day. Remember to subscribe if you haven't to follow along with all things garden. And we'll see you in the next one. Very happy planting, everybody. Thanks for the vet session today. Bye.